All right. So we've added some lights here, or specifically one light. And so now what we want to do is obviously we need to have lights applied to more of the scene. And we also have a couple different types of lights. We're going to do some scene lighting stuff and whatever. So obviously I've got the, the, the platforms working and that looks pretty cool, but you know, it looks ridiculous if not all of that is done. So I'm going to go to my grid here and I've got my background and my background detail. Those are both set up to use the exact same uh, material. Uh, one that just happens to have all of the tiles on it. So that is my background wall material, which is under level and materials there. So I'm going to drag background wall material onto my background tile map and then onto my background detailed tile map. I don't need to do that for shadows. I don't want a lit material for my shadows. My shadows should stay pure black. They're my shadows. So those are going to stay sprites. Now you might be thinking, well, everything else turned black. Well, it didn't really. If I move my torch over here, there you can see the face and, you know, up here and whatever. And Another thing I could see is that the background walls material also has emissives on it. So now the Unity logo glows as opposed to just being there. One of the neat things that uh, we've added on here is if I look at the background detail uh, uh, tile map, this prefab that we dragged in, you may have noticed this before, had a script on it that didn't do anything until now called this emission pulse. And what that does is it just pulses up and down the emissive property of the material that's on it. Before it didn't have an emissive property, so there was not a big deal. But now what that does is it adds just a little bit of sort of a, a glowing uh, to to those things. So they sort of fade in and fade out over time and stuff like that, just to give some detail, some ambience, some light to our level. Um, and again, you know, on mobile, maybe you don't want that script or whatever, but it's there and you can check it all out if you want to see how it works. So that's one light here. And I can add a couple more lights. So let's say I want to go back to my props here. Let's say I want maybe another wall torch right here. And I'm going to have some spikes down here. So I want a wall torch to sort of highlight that. And then maybe I'll do one more uh, down here. Not a shrine, a wall torch. Right about there. Okay, so I've added some wall torches, but my scene is still really dark. I have another prop here called hanging light. So my wall torches are set back, so they'll attach to the, sort of appear to be part of the back wall. My hanging lights kind of sit more on the foreground here, and they have a little bit of an animation on them. So I'm going to drag a hanging light in here. This one's already set up with the point light, because we don't have to do that again. Drag that on here. And a couple of things about this that's pretty neat. So one, there is a bit of an animation that's going to make it swing back and forth. Also on the hanging lamp, when I click on the point light, I'm going to see that it uses a cookie all right, which is sort of like a, a texture on a light, which is going to give it this cross of shadow here. So no light will be rendered uh, on the shadow parts of that cookie there to sort of match the, the pattern there on the light. And that's going to make it look pretty cool. So if I hit play now, uh, I'm even going to see as the light swings, that cookie swings with it, right? And it can be updated and do all this really cool stuff. And those are my hanging lights. Now, even though I've added a bunch of lights to my scene, it's pretty dark. So I could add even more lights if I wanted to, but I'm starting to encounter a bit of an issue. Too many lights, too many real-time lights can be a problem depending on your hardware, especially if you're on mobile, right? So we have to consider, is it better to just add a bunch of lights or just to increase the brightness of our level across the board? Now, without getting too much into the details of like say deferred versus forward and stuff like that, these projects, the ones that you open today, are set up to be in deferred rendering by default. The real key plus to deferred lighting is that no matter how many pixel lights, point lights I have in my scene, all of the ones that light opaque geometry get combined into one pass. So it doesn't matter how many I have, which is awesome, right? Most mobile devices, though, perform better with forward rendering. And in forward rendering, each pixel light exponentially increases the draw calls of your scene. So it's set on mobile devices to only allow one or two of those pixel lights. And so a lot of your lights won't illuminate your scene. So we're going to use some additional scene lighting to make our scene a bit brighter to kind of strike a happy medium between the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to Window and then to Lighting and then to Settings. And that's going to open my Lighting Settings window. And I like to just dock this one right up here next to my inspector. It's just a good place to keep it. And I'm looking right here at my ambient color. So right now it's kind of a dark gray, which is why my scene is kind of a dark gray. And if I click on this, I can change it to all sorts of stuff. So I can, you know, just change the coloring of my whole scene, right? And so what I'm going to do 
right, is I have a color I happen to like to use, uh, but again, you can use whatever color you want. I'm gonna use this A8C5C1, which is kind of a light whitish greenish. It won't stay this color forever, but that's the color I'm gonna use right now. And now it's a nice balance between having some light, uh, having some color from those lights on the walls and on the, the platforms and stuff like that without having so many lights that it's going to become a performance issue, uh, especially on mobile and stuff like that. And I could start talking about like light baking and stuff like that, but some of our lights move and we want some shadows and things, so it's not really an effective solution for a game like this. So we really want to limit down the number of these things that we're having. Again, for mobile, on PC, if you support deferred or on, on Mac, you know, go nuts, have as many of these as you want, but we're trying to strike some balance, at least for today. And again, it's all about your level and how you're building it. Maybe you'll have more, maybe you'll have less. It's about the ambience and about the kind of lighting you want, but that's why we've made these decisions that we've made. And so that's kind of this step for here. So here's what you're gonna do. So you're gonna start off by going to the assets level materials folder and locating the background wall material. And you're just going to drag that onto the background game object under grid and then the background detail so that you get lighting applied to your, all of your level elements. Then you can go to props and you can start dragging wall torches and hanging lights all over your scene as many as you want wherever you think it lights up your level in a cool way. To light up the rest of the level where maybe it might be too dark or you know, where you want to add some more specific color, you're going to go to window and then lighting and then settings. I like to dock that window over here. Uh, you can place it wherever you want. And you're specifically gonna look at this ambient color and you are going to pick a color for the ambient light of your scene. I used A8C5C1. You can use whichever color you want. All right, so go ahead and do that. Uh, be sure to save your scene when you're done. And if you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand and we'll help you out.